Thank you for telling me that. Can you see that now? Can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, so we did where we left off yesterday was we left off on doing a strong base problem. And remember, I'm telling you, for me, this is the way that uh, I'm going to do, do all these problems. Is I'm going to write the equation. I'm going to do an ice table, okay? And, and I told you in writing the equation in here, and just, whoops. Can you see that now, Tyler and Kyle and Ethan? Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to do the same process where I'm going to set up, uh, write out the equation, do an ice table. Remember I said the one time that you do not want to write in water in the equation is a strong base. So we did this problem yesterday in class, right? We did this yesterday. Okay, so here we go now into a weak base problem. And the weak base, again, is the one problem that you have to, you have to, when you write the equation, you have to write water in. Okay, what I'm going to try and do here today for you guys that are at home is I'm going to kind of exit out of the notes and go back and forth. And Allie made a good point about being able to see it a little bit better in a, in a recording. So if there's something you can't see, again, or if you need me to move the camera, let me know. Hey, Mr. Wood, for some reason I can't see the notes right now. I don't know if it's on my end or your end. Okay. Kyle and Ethan, you guys can? I can't see it. Well, it's just because he turned them off for a sec. Okay. And, Mr. Wood, if you want, instead of, uh, like, screen sharing and then stopping sharing, you can just leave it shared, and then we can switch back and forth on our ends. Well, the thing is, as Ali was saying, when I make those recordings... Uh oh yeah, I can't see it. Is that better, Kyle? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. You can see it. Okay, good. That's the kind of thing I need you guys to do, is to tell me when you can't see something in this technology day age. Okay, so weak bases. So remember bases. Okay, we said... Acids, I gave you two definitions. Again, you didn't need to remember the names, the Arrhenius definition, the Bronson Lowry definition. But acids, either one, had the same definition. Acids give up an H. But bases had two definitions. And one is, and really that is the one with the strong bases, those are the ones that give up OH, NaOH, KOH, CaOH2. And uh, but the other definition is is that bases are a are a hydrogen acceptor, and so nitrogen because it's got that non-bonded pair, like here, uh, like in this case on the bottom of the end, and here over on the right side of the end, that is the good place where an H positive ion can go. And uh, one other thing, one other thing too, I, I was going to talk about with strong bases. So we did the problem yesterday with NaOH, but let's just say we have this, CaOH2, strong, one of the strong bases, so it dissociates like this. And let's just, I'm just gonna make this number up. Okay, so the problem here, the problem here is to determine the pH. Well, well let's say that this is 0 0.002. Because it's a strong base, because it's a strong base, this is going to be completely gone. But over here, one to one, this would be 0 0.002. But here, because it's one to two, what number would go here? It'd be 0 0.004, right? 
And then from there, so now I know the OH, so then I can find the POH, and then I can find the PH, okay? <sighs> okay, I only want to try and do what, what you were saying. So again, nitrogen is a common thing in a base because of that non-bonded pair, which is a good place where the H positive can come in. So here's the problem. Calculate the pH of a 15.0 molar NH3, and we're given the KB. And, and sometimes, sometimes a clue on these problems is that just that lowercase letter, a KB is telling you it's a base, okay? And that's actually maybe going to be a little bit confusing here uh, later. Okay, so let me go then. Okay, just again, so those guys at home, this is what we're talking about, right, Allie? Okay. Okay, so I have I have NH3, and like I said, when you have a weak base, when you have a weak base in writing the equation, you have to write in water because you have to have a source of H+. Plus. So if this is a base, it's going to accept an H from the water. You've got to have a source of hydrogen from water. So again, a little thing, but to me, it's, it's one of those little things that can be helpful. So the way I've been doing it, in writing the equation, and this has kind of been our foundation, kind of our structure in doing these problems. If you can write the equation and do an ice table, you can really figure these out. The, in writing the equation, the only time that I include water is with a weak base. Okay, then I have the ice table. And this is 15. Now water, I'm just going to ignore. Water, I'm going to ignore because in the K expression, water is just going to be one. So I'm, I'm not going to include that. And, and, uh, and also, too, what I'm trying to find here is the pH. So this is zero, zero. Okay, then this is going to be minus X. But again, if I go back and I do that same thing that I talked about yesterday, which is if I take the concentration of this divided by the K value. So if I did that here, so the K, the K value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 15. So 15 divided by the K value. This number is significantly bigger than 100. Okay, which means, which means I can ignore this x. Okay, plus x, plus x. Okay, so the kb, and again, the point here is to find the pH. And if I can solve for the OH, then I can solve for the pH. So I've got 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared, x times x, over 15. Is, is, the, is to that, does that, okay. So what X is going to equal here, it's going to equal the OH. Okay, see if you can find the pH. On your calculators, go through the process. And when you solve for X, you solve for OH. Why did you square X again? Because uh, Tyler was X times X. Okay. Again, so you can go through on your calculator through the whole process to get to the pH. So what I, what I get for X is 0 0.016. So I just took 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 15. And then I took the square root of that. Okay, now, now I'm going to find the, so this is the OH. So now I'm going to find the POH by doing, by doing negative log of 0 0.016. And that gives me 1.80. And again, remember sig fig. So here I did, so I had the OH, so to find the POH, 
And again, whenever you see P, it means negative log. Like one thing we're not going to get to, we're going to, again, just trying to get through as much as we can, is chapter 15. And in chapter 15, and what I'll do here is we get closer to the end of April. I'll do a couple lessons if you want to watch in chapter 15. But there's a thing called PKA. PKA. What would be PKA? It said P is the negative log. So what would be PKA? It'd be the, it'd be the negative log of the KA value. That's what it would be. Okay, but back here, so there, now then, pH then would just be equal to 14 minus 1.80. So that is 12.20. And again, it's always a good idea to ask yourself, does that make sense? And hopefully it does make sense because it's a base and it's 15 molar. I mean, that is very concentrated. So a higher pH, at least it's above 7. So I know it's ballpark. Okay, questions in. Okay, and again, I'm just for the sake of time here. I uh, going to be just skipping through. Can you guys see the notes at home? So you can see Allie why I struggle with this. I thought it says stop presenting. Yeah. So probably I went through all that, Allie, and you probably get the same deal. Can you guys at home see the notes? Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay, so the, I'm going to skip this page. There's these things called polyprotic acids. I'm going to do a problem on the next page. And again, just I'm going to skip this, this page here. But what a polyprotic, whenever you see poly, that means more than two, right? And so these are acids that have more than one H. And I'm going to do a problem with that's a polyprotic acid on the next page. But they dissociate, the way acids work is they dissociate one H at a time. And, but the, the pH is always, it, it's kind of like a problem that we did yesterday about a mixture of acids. It's like a mixture of acids. And remember in a mixture of acids, the pH is determined by the acid with the highest K value, the strongest acid. And it, it's always... It's always going to be the first H that's dissociated that's going to be the case. So, okay, so now, but I do want to do a problem that does involve a multi step thing, and that is this one. Okay, so determine the pH of a one molar H2SO4 solution. Okay, so I'll leave that on the board for a second. So, because it's di, because sulfuric acid is diprotic. It's going to dissociate one H at a time. But you'll see that the pH really is going to mainly be determined by the dissociation of the first step. And it's because the, the first acid is a strong acid. Okay, and we have to do this. We have to be given uh, this table. And so if you guys look, I'm pointing here in class at the one that says sulfuric acid. So the Ka1, so that's the dissociation of the first H. Very large, which means it's, it's sulfuric acid is one of the strong acids. But then it's the second step, so the second H, its value is given as 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. So what I'm going to do here again is the same thing as I'm going to do, this, again, the same exact structure that we have done. Now, uh, 
many times, which is I'm going to write out the equation. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do this on the board. At home, is it? can you just see the board now? You can't see the notes? Yeah. Okay. That's what we wanted, right, Alec? Okay, so it dissociates like this. Okay, now, now the point of the problem here is to find the pH. And that means, again, I'll do the negative log of the H+. plus. So there's going to be two steps in this. This is an example of a polyprotic acid. And again, almost every time the, the H is determined by the first step because it's the stronger acid. Okay, we were told in that problem that the, uh, that the H plus is one molar. We were told this, so it's one molar. And because it's one of the six strong acids, it's going to be totally gone. And uh, over here, but there is a, a second step. And this is the concept, again, of a polyprotic acid. It's like, kind of like there's a mixture of acids. So this can act as an acid, too. So on the, on the table here, which is now here, or now I don't have it up, but if, when you look in the, the second column, so there was Ka1, that was this. Here was the Ka2, so this dissociates like this. This is a weak acid. And if I do an ice table, so, but at this step, at this step now, I know that I have the HSO4 is one, but the H plus is one as well. And this is zero. There isn't any sulfate on it. So again, where I got these from, I got it from here. So the HSO4 was one, the H plus was one. So this will be minus X. And here, if we go back to that test, that, that test that you, we can do up front, and make sure the K value that was given in the table was 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. This time it's pretty close. So if I took the, the concentration of this divided by the K value, this again was given in the table. So if I do 1, remember I said the cutoff is 100 or around 100. This time it's 83. So that means this is closer. But again, I'm going to do that assumption of, of ignoring the X. And we'll go back and check it at the end. But, but it's, again, I'm telling you, we're always going to ignore the X. But this is, this is the, the way we would do this. So plus X, plus X. So what I have here is 1 minus X. But I'm going to ignore this X. 1 plus X, but I'm going to ignore that X as well, too. And then X. So then the K values, so I have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 is equal to 1.0. And again, I'm ignoring that X, and I'm kind of pushing it, like I said. We'll check this at the end. 1.0 plus X, ignoring that X, times this X, and then... So then if I do the math and I solve for x, what I get for x is 1.2 times 10 to the negative. So, so then for the h plus, because if I want to solve for the pH, I need to know the h plus. So it's 1.0 plus x. Now, now let me now let me go back and, and check the assumption at the end, the five percent rule. So now if I take oh, Mr. Wood, can you move the camera down just a second? Yes, yes, thanks, Ethan. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and that's it's good you did that.
you asked that. Okay, so now let's do the 5% rule. Just because I said we were pushing it here. So if I take the 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2, and I divide it by 1. So again, the 5% rule is multiplied by 100. I take what I got for x over the initial amount. So I've got 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 1 times 100, and it comes out to be 1.2%. So that means, in the end, the assumption is less than 5%, so it turned out to be okay. And again, I'm telling you that it's, it's always going to be okay. <clears throat> but just checking. Okay, now, so I come back here, so now I got 1.0 plus 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. So again, I said H plus was 1.0 plus X. So I do 1.0, here's X. So if I do this, so I've got, I'm just going to do it on my calculator. So 1.0 plus 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 gives me 1.012. And this, again, is why in a polyprotic acid the second and the third step they're not going to look at the difference here it's one and then we go all the way and this is one that's really close usually they're not that close we're, we're, we're out here in the hundred but then to find the pH so I'll do the negative log of the H plus so I'm going to do the negative log of 1.012 So I'm going to do that on my calculator. So I'm do negative log of 1.012 gives me a pH of negative 0 0.005. Technically, that had four sig figs, so, ne uh, so negative 0 0.005185. I get my sig fig screwed up. Sig figs with the logarithm start at the decimal, so those zeros would be significant. Point zero, negative point zero zero five two. And if we have a if we have a pH that's negative, what uh, what kind of pH is that? If it's a negative number. It's incredibly acidic, right? Because we said the scale was seven one to seven. Well, if in, if we're past zero into the negatives, it's very acidic. But if it's one molar sulfuric acid, that would probably make, make sense. Definitely a little bit. And again, that, that the kind of problems you're going to see on the quiz here and on the test are going to be problems that are very similar to what we did before that problem. But anyways, that's polyprotic acid. Okay. Now, on to kind of big point and a new point definitely even if last spring you were following along with me or Mr. Hodis or Mr. Conyers we're going to now start to look at salts can you guys see the notes at home yeah we can okay thanks Tyler okay so where did this process called hydrolysis Okay, so. What we're going to do here now is we're going to look at a salt. Okay, so what a salt is is an ionic compound. So it's, we have a metal and a non-metal, a cation and an anion. And we're going to decide is this is, is this acidic or basic or neutral? And here is one place, and I've always tried to make Regular chem, AP chem, not a huge memorization thing. There's some memorization, but more of a given some data, do some analysis. There's going to be some memorization here. I'm going to write some stuff on the board, kind of just reviewing the strong acids.
So what we're going to have to do here, and I, I'm going to write on the board, is we're going to have to recall, this goes back to something we talked about earlier in the chapter, but when you have the conjugate base of a strong acid, conjugate base of a strong acid, we said was a very weak base, and we said it was such a weak base it couldn't do this, it couldn't hydrolyze water. It was a weaker base than water. And so we're going to have to remember what are the conjugate bases of the six strong acids. And we're going to have to remember, too, what are the conjugate acids of the strong bases. So hydrolysis. So you're going to hear me say today, and you'll hear me say again on Thursday, is that, is that ion strong enough to hydrolyze water, to split water? And, uh, and so we're going to have to look at the, again, at the conjugate bases of strong of the acids and the conjugate acids of the bases. So hydrolysis, when a, wa when a salt reacts with water, there's three types of salts. Remember what a salt is. A salt is an ionic compound, like, like table salt, NaCl, metal, non-metal. And this is something we didn't talk at all about at all in first year chem, is to look at a salt and decide if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. And again, the key to this is to, is to remember the strong acids and the strong bases and their conjugates. So salts that produce neutral solutions, so it's the product of a strong acid and a strong base. So these are neutral solutions, meaning they're neither acidic or basic. Uh, so, and it kind of makes sense. If we mix a strong acid with a strong base, it would, it would neutralize each other, just like we did in the first step of the titration. Produces a salt that does not hydrolyze and therefore doesn't affect the pH. Like here, HCl, its conjugate, its conjugate base is Cl, which is a very weak, which is a weak base. Okay. It's a weaker base than water. So let me just, I'm going to give you guys a minute to write this down. But Cl is so weak that it won't react with water. We're going to have to recall again, like I said, we're going to have to recall the conjugate bases that come from the strong acids. I'm going to write them on the board here. And we're also going to have to recall the conjugate acids of the strong bases. And when we see those in a salt, when we see those, we'll know those are so weak, they can't hydrolyze water. They, they're not going to affect the pH. They're not going to break water. But when we have another cation or anion that does not originate from there, then we're going to know, okay, this can hydrolyze water. Again, that's probably very confusing, and we're going to have to look at some examples. Okay. 
when I do these, because I was talking about with acids and bases, the only time I'm going to write water in the equation is when it was a weak base. Well, here, when we're looking at a salt, when we're looking at a salt, uh, I'm always, I'm always going to include water. When we're looking at salt, I'm always going to include water. <clears throat> so here, HCl, its conjugate base is chloride. Again, which when we look at a salt, we're going to have to look at the cation, which would be the conjugate bases, and the anions, which would be the, the uh, I, I, so let me say that right, the cations would be the conjugate acids, and the uh, anions would be the conjugate bases. I'm going to write this all out. But chloride is, because it's a conjugate base of a, of a strong acid, it's such a weak base, it cannot hydrolyze in water. It won't happen. This reaction won't happen. So anions and strong bases have no affinity for H plus or OH. Therefore, they will not hydrolyze. They're not going to affect the pH. And the same is true, the same is true of <coughs> The cations of group one metals. And we're actually, I'm going to make a list. The cations of all the strong bases, I'm going to write it on the board. They have no affinity for H plus, so they can't produce, uh, <clears throat> so they can't produce H plus. So if we have sodium, which again is going to be the conjugate acid of a strong base, it can't hydrolyze water. Okay, so here is the list I'm talking about. So if we the guys at home trying to tilt the camera over over here. I'm just going to move it. I'm just going to move the camera. Oops. <clears throat> move the camera over here. Get some more technology problems. Okay, so if I have the strong acids. And here's our conjugate basis. So I have HCl. So Cl. And Kyle, Ethan, and Tyler, hopefully you guys can see this. Can you guys see this? We can. Okay. Which means this conjugate base, when I see this, when I see this, and so again, if I have XY, so here's the salt. Salt's an ionic compound. So if I have X and Y, so this is the cation, and this would be the conjugate acids. You know what I'm talking about now, this is the anion, and this would be the conjugate base. Well, if the conjugate base is one of this list, I want to ignore it, because it's a, such a, such a, Weak base, it's not going to hydrolyze water. It's the point, I'm, the point I'm trying to get to here. And you'll see this in these problems we're going to do today and then finish on Thursday. Is when you see these as the anion, ignore it. It's not going to affect the pH at all. So the principle was, the principle was, the conjugate base of a strong acid is such a weak base, it can't hydrolyze water. So if we see these as the anion, they're, they're going to be, they're going to have no effect on the pH at all. But if we see another anion that's not from this list, it's going to make a basic solution. And, and I'll show you, I'll do an example of that. Okay, and then the strong bases. Okay, and then our conjugate acids. So now I'm talking about the cations. So I've got LiOH. And it's gonna be, this is gonna be the same thing that it, when you have the, the conjugate acid of a strong base, you ignore it because it can't hydrolyze water. So then I've got NaOH. So then I've got 
I've got CaOH2, and I've got SROH2, and I've got BaOH2. So this is where you got to remember the strong acids, their conjugate base is so weak, ignore them. The strong bases, they're conjugate acids. When you see them in the salt, you ignore them. So these conjugates they are so weak they don't affect the pH at all. And we're going to do a bunch of examples. Definitely new, definitely confusing. Look, a cation would be the conjugate acid. If it's not one of these, that means that that solution will be acidic. That means that that cation, that ion, that conjugate acid is a strong enough acid to hydrolyze water. Then you'll look at the anion, and if, it comes, if it's one of these, you'll ignore it. It's so weak, it doesn't do uh, anything at all. It's kind of a joke. Here's another joke. I think I've told you this one before. But if you guys know the peanuts characters, the, uh, the star of the show is Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown went out, <clears throat> Kennedy, and for some reason he bought a pair of new see-through pajamas. I don't know why he did that, Kennedy, but he did. So he went to his friend who was a weak conjugate acid, conjugate base. He was a good friend and everything, but he just couldn't stand up. And so Charlie Brown tried on his pair of see-through pajamas, and he goes, Linus, what do you think of my new see-through pajamas? And Linus, again, who's a weak acid or base, he couldn't really be honest, so he just said, oh, Charlie Brown, they're very, very bad. You know what I'm talking about. His friends are kind of tickled your ears. You need... Kind of need those friends sometimes. But he was a weak conjugate acid or base. And so Charlie Brown knew, Linus doesn't give me the real story. I need somebody who's going to give me the real story. And if you know your peanuts characters, he would then go to his friend Lucy. Lucy is not a weak conjugate or acid or base. She's a strong character. She'll tell the truth no matter what. So Charlie Brown tries on his pair of see-through pajamas for Lucy. And he goes, Lucy, what do you think of my new see-through pajamas? And Lucy goes, Charlie Brown, I knew you were crazy. But now I can see you're nuts. <laughs> All that being said, these are so weak, like Linus, they, could, they, they don't do anything, okay? If you see those here or here, we'll ignore them. But if we see something else, then we'll know it. If the first one is not from this list, it's going to be acidic. And if the second one is not from this list, it's going to be basic. That's what this is saying. Okay, so this page is kind of exactly the, uh, the same thing. So I'm just going to skip through this. So this is what I've got on the board over here. <clears throat> okay, so the first combination is when we have something like this. So what I'm saying is, let's say here. So this morning, if you guys had some scrambled eggs, and you put salt on them, is this, is this acidic, basic, or neutral? Well, sodium is right here. So that means it doesn't influence anything. It's so weak, it, it's not going to change the pH. And then Cl is here, so it all, it's also not going to change the pH at all. So this is going to be neutral. Okay, now let's do some that are not neutral. Okay, so this reaction here. So salts that produce a basic solution. So here we're now going into something that is definitely good. We're looking at a salt. And 
And we got to get to where we're looking at the formula of the salt. So now if, if I go back, if I go back to first year chem, wait a second here, but if I ask you just to write out the reaction for this, this is what you do. And if you did it, I'd be very happy. So I've got NaOH, strong base, with acetic acid. And so if you, if you thought about it, strong base, weak acid, the solution is probably going to be basic, right? Strong base, weak acid. But then if you're going to write this out, we're just going to do the outers and the inners, right? Acid base, always get a water and a salt. And remember, too, and on the, the, the lab, and I might have might even pointed out here, it's getting close to done today, but on the lab, there's a couple reactions where you've got an acid in a compound with CO3 or co compound with HCO3. You also get off CO2. But back here, so I get a water. Then I get off this, right? Water, one and one like this. Okay, but now the point of this is I look at this salt. Okay, so I look at the, the cation. It comes from this list. That means ignore it. It's not a strong enough acid. And remember it always goes, it goes acid base, cation anion, acid base. But this is not in this list, which means this, this is like losing, or this is, this is like Linus. Couldn't tell Charlie Brown the truth. Okay. This is like Lucy. This, this is a strong enough, and again, it goes acid base. So this is a basic solution. So what happens then? Like I tried to explain, the sodium, because it's from this list here, is so weak, it's not going to hydrolyze, which means split water. But the C2H3O2 is not in that list. So that means it's the conjugate base of a weak acid, so it can't hydrolyze water. So if I simply gave you the formula of this here, and I ask you, is this, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I, I probably will run out of time today, but I'll do it tomorrow. And, uh, and hopefully you can identify that this is a basic solution because this, the acid, is uh, such a weak acid it can't hydrolyze water. But this base is not, and so it's going to make a basic solution. Okay, so this salt... Again, a salt, an ionic compound, is basic. Okay, so, um, and again, we're going to get into some, some actually problems where we're going to solve pH. Okay, all this, you really don't need to write out. But let, me, let me go back. So if we took the Ka of the reaction of just the dissociation of the acetic acid, and then the second reaction is what I have here. And again, this, this is not the key thing here. But then if I did that, and then I canceled it all out, remember with Ks, if we're going to sum them together, we're going to multiply the Ks, cancel everything out. And what I end up with this, and this is what's important. And this is actually on the formula sheet too. So the Ka times the Kb equals the Kw. So if you go back, to the formula sheet, and you look on the front, equilibrium, it's a little bit past halfway down. 
So KW equals KA times KB, which means we always know KW, KW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If we know KA, we can always solve for KB. So that's one to star. That one's on the formula sheet. We're going to use that um, in some problems we're going to do. Maybe do one today. So here's, okay, so here's a problem. Write an equation for the hydrolysis reaction of sodium acetate with water. Determine the KB. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this. Hydrolysis means combining with water. So here, so here, I'm going to look again at sodium acetate. Okay, and I'm going to go back to this list. This I ignore because it's it's a it's a conjugate acid of a strong base. It's not going to hydrolyze water, but this I can't ignore because it's not the conjugate base of a strong acid. So the hydrolysis then. And remember again, it goes acid base. So this is a base. Being a base, it's going to act like a base, which means it's going to accept an H. So here would be the hydrolysis. If this is being a base, it's going to accept an H, and this is going to give off or give, it's going to, the water is going to give off the H. So this is going to act as a base in the sense that it's going to accept an H. So this would be the reaction. Okay, and we're told the Ka for acetic acid, we're told that the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. This is acetic acid. So then to find the Kb, I'm going to use this. So Ka times Kb equals Kw. The Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The Kb is what I'm trying to solve for, and the Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So again, now, now with that equation, if I know one, if I know the Ka, I can solve for the Kb and vice versa. Because that's the that's the value for Kw. And Mason, again, the uh, if you get if you look here on the formula sheet, see it's, it tells us Kw, which it, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. And then it says Kw equals Ka times Kb, which really means which really means Ka times Kb equals one times ten to the negative. Okay, so if I do the math here. I get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2. Could you move the camera down this a little bit? Yeah. Okay, final thing. 
definitely some new stuff, confusing stuff, and it's probably really good the decision we made at the beginning of class to put the test off just because we still need we still need to go through some stuff and review some stuff from today for Thursday. Okay, I want to just I'm gonna skip ahead. We're gonna come we are gonna we are gonna do this problem and we are gonna do we're gonna talk about this. But I want to look at this page. Okay, this is where we're gonna conclude. Okay, and this is actually where I'm gonna start. But I want to do this now, today. And then on Thursday, I'm going to come back, and this is where we're going to start. So the key here is to look at the salt and decide, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So I'm going to, this, this will be the last slide we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do here, and again, let's just go through this slide and I'll, I'll stop and you guys can relax and or work on the lab too would be kind of the point. Okay, so we're going to determine whether the following salts will cause a solution to be acidic, basic, or neutral. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll be using this list right here. Okay, and then we're, not, we're going to worry about writing equations on Thursday. Okay, so for the first one, KNO3. So what I'm looking for, okay, so KNO3, well, K is here. So it's a, it's a Linus. It's so weak it doesn't do anything. And then NO3 is, is here. Well, it's also a Linus. So that means that this solution would be neutral. Both of them are, both of the, the cation and the anion, the conjugate acid, the conjugate base, are so weak, it, they, neither one will hydrolyze water. Okay, the second one, LICN. So LI is here, it's a Linus. So it's so weak, it can't do anything. But CN is not in this list. So that means that this solution, that this, the, the conjugate base, is strong enough to hydrolyze water. That means this solution is basic is basic. And tomorrow or Thursday, we'll work on writing equations. So number two is basic. Now number three and four and five are a little bit confusing. But what I see, I see C5, H5, NH, and then Cl. But see, I see the Cl. And Cl is right here. So that means it's a, it's a Linus. It's weak. Okay. The, the acid then, the cation must be C5H5NH, which is not in this list, which means this one must be acidic. So it's always acid base, cation, anion. Okay, this one, number four, again, I see ClO4, which is here. It's a Linus, so I ignore it. 
And there again is C5, H5, NH. There's always two parts, the conjugate acid, the conjugate base, the cation and the anion. Number four must be acidic as well. Uh, this one, I see ClO3. Sometimes you got to look at the end. Well, that's not in this list. So that's, that's a Lucy. And this one must be a Lucy too. So this is one I'll talk about tomorrow. To me, we'll just say neutral because they're both, they're both so strong that they can um, hydrolyze water. How about six? Anything you recognize there? The K, which is a, which is a Linus, so weak I ignore it. But the OCL is not. So is it acidic, basic, or neutral? It's definitely confusing. It's basic. I think Kennedy said that's good because the OCL is a Lucy. And then how about this one? Do you recognize any of those there? Or sodium. So it means it's not acidic. But then the C, CH2, NH2. It's not there. This one must be basic. So, okay, I'm going to stop there. I, and actually, you know what I'm going to do on Thursday? The first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do this one again, just to come back and kind of revisit looking at the formula of a salt, deciding if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay, the rest of the period, guys, is yours. Uh, the one thing on the lab, if you look at the lab, and I'm going to give you guys some time. The test, again, is probably really best we made the decision we did, the te or you guys made the decision. The test is going to be two weeks from today. But if you look on the lab, just in terms of writing equations, and again, I'm going to give you guys time on Thursday as well. And just like Juliana, like you said, if you, uh, juniors, when you're done bubbling, if you want to come by, I'm going to be here. But uh, if you look on the very number four on just the pre-lab questions, remember when you have you got you got Na2CO3 with H and then KHCO3 with HCl. When you had an acid with a compound with CO3 or HCO3, you still get off water. You still get off a salt, like the salt in number the first one would be NaNO3. The salt in the second one would be the KCl. But you also get off CO2. You also get off CO2, so recall that. Okay, I'm done talking. I did. I even had an extra joke today, Alex. So, okay, you guys at home, uh, I'm done with you guys for today. You can, if you want to, uh, stay on and ask questions. You are more than uh, welcome to do that.